Hey everyone, thanks for tuning back into Michigan Ambush Outdoors for this week's video. Uh, in this week's video, what I want to do is I just want to walk you through uh, start to finish on how to build a custom arrow so you guys can start to tinker with your setups uh, and figure out what fletching configuration works best for your particular bow. Uh, now in this video, it's gonna be a little different than what you've probably historically seen out on YouTube uh, because we're not gonna be using an arrow saw. And the reason that I wanna to do this video without the use of an arrow saw is I just wanna show you that it is possible to start playing around with fletching your own arrows without that that piece of equipment. That piece of equipment can get pretty expensive. Uh, there are options for you to do uh, DIY arrow cutting setups, but for me, what I like to personally do is I like to just take a measurement of my arrow uh, and just order it off Lancasters and have them pre-cut it. Uh, the way that you're actually gonna do that is you're gonna take a bare shaft arrow uh, measure from carbon to carbon. So what I mean by that is remove the field point and then remove the knock and, re and measure the arrow from one end to the other. And then when you place your order through Lancasters, your arrows will come pre-cut. Now, before you get into fletching your own arrows, what I would recommend is that you actually take a little bit of time and square off the ends when they get to you. Uh, another option that Lancasters does for you is they will actually pre-install any of the hardware uh, that comes with the arrow. For, so, for example, this Easton Axis uh, comes standard with their hit. 16 grain insert so i have the option to either install that myself or have lancasters do that for me i think they charge about 50 cents per arrow to add that so the first thing that you really want to take into consideration before you start fletching your arrows is proper vein placement and one way that you can check this is just take a bare shaft arrow and go to full draw and have someone give you a reference point on the arrow to where you're going to ensure that you're not getting any facial pressure on your veins at full draw. Uh, my veins you can see are a little forward uh, compared to what I would call maybe standard um, and again I did that so to ensure that I have proper vein placement. My, my veins are about an inch and a half from the throat of the knock. It definitely does not affect the accuracy of the arrow. I actually shoot this arrow set up very very well and I'm very happy with it. So that's probably the first thing that you guys are going to want to consider before you start fletching your own arrows. Uh, the next thing that you want to check into is which way does your arrow naturally spin as it leaves the bow. Uh, and a good way to check that is this again take a bare shaft arrow, uh, step about three to four feet away from a target and shoot it into the target and then um, that's going to tell you which way that that arrow is going to naturally rotate as it comes out of the bow. One thing you want to do before you do that is just make a mark somewhere on the carbon. You can either do it with a white Sharpie or what I did is I just installed one of my wraps and being that I have uh, my logo on here, I use that as my point of reference. Uh, just make sure that that marking is, is faced up as it's in the bow and then it'll either rotate left or the right. And once you figure out which way your bow is naturally spinning in arrows, then you're gonna wanna fletch your arrows accordingly. So if you're getting a right turn out of your bow naturally, obviously you're gonna wanna fletch those arrows to the right. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start to fletch uh, one of the arrows. And the first step for me um, is to add my custom wrap to it. Uh, what I like to do is I like to take the the arrow and I like to wrap them all the same and what I mean by that is I just like to position the logo the Easton Axis logo up um, so all my wraps are the same um, it's not a requirement it doesn't really do anything other than just look really nice so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start this process and what you want to do is you want to make sure that your wrap is basically right to the end of your carbon without touching your knock. Um, once you get lined up in that spot, you just wanna kinda push that arrow forward until that wrap starts to move. And then from there, you're just gonna roll that wrap. Now try not to touch the carbon, uh, the clean carbon with your dirty fingers. Um, and then once you do that, uh, just go ahead and continue to roll forward. And you can see now we have uh, an arrow that has uh, a nice clean wrap on it. It's close to the throat of, or it's close to the back of the knock. Uh, there's really no overlap, uh, and it looks really, really clean. For me, I like adding wraps to my arrows. Um, you know, it uh, 
it just looks really nice and it's a, a little easier to kind of see the type of blood that you're going to get. It might be a little hard on these green ones, but again, it's more or less for the look um, than, it, than it is anything. Uh, so now that we have our arrow wrap on, what we're going to do next is we're just going to start to fletch our arrows. So I actually have two different jigs. I have a boning jig and then I also have a Bitsenberger jig, but my Bitsenberger is only set up to do a left helical, not a right helical. Uh, and again, due to the Due to my bow naturally spinning them to the right, I want to stay with that right helical. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on this. Uh, what you're going to do though, uh, when you get started, is you just want to go ahead and place your vein in the jig. And what I would recommend is you actually go on uh, the, the manufacturer of whatever vein you're actually using and check to see if there's any recommendations on priming these veins or using any alcohol on them. Uh, boning actually does not have any recommendations that you pre-prime the fletchings or use alcohol to clean any material off. And I've gone ahead and fletched, like I said, a half dozen arrows with the same process and I have not lost a single one and I've actually sent uh, those arrows through my target a couple times uh, and have had no issues. So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start out by just adding a couple small dots of glue on the fletch. What I like to do is I actually like to add about seven dots of glue. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm gonna go ahead and spread this out evenly across this vein. And now we are ready to go ahead and pop this on. Now with this jig, um, keep in mind, uh, it's always a good idea to make sure the arrow didn't move, the, the, the knock holder is actually not the greatest. So you're gonna wanna make sure you just push the arrow down. And then what I like to do is I just like to put some pressure on uh, the plate itself. I don't know if you can see that, but the plate itself and the arrow. And what that's gonna do is it's just gonna make sure that I have a solid bond uh, to, uh, to this shaft or to this wrap actually. And I'm gonna just hold it here for roughly about 30 seconds uh, before I pull this off. So that's good for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pop that off. And then, so when you're fletching your arrows, always make sure you got Q-tips available. Uh, what, that, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're just gonna to wanna to run that down each side of the vein on the back and then kind of in, on the front and just clean off any of that excess glue. Uh, and you'll see here, um, we're gonna go ahead and rotate this and we'll actually hear a click referencing when we're in the next fletching position. So I don't know if you heard that, uh, but it's actually it clicked. So now I know I'm actually in the, the right orientation to accept the next vein. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically repeat this process uh, two more times. So again, just add seven dots of glue down this vein. Make sure I spread that out evenly. And then we're gonna go ahead and slap this on. When you're using this boning jig, uh, make sure that you're actually holding the fletching in place um, so you don't lose it. Again, push that arrow down, make sure that it's the knock is in the right position. And then just, like I said, apply that pressure to uh, that fletching plate. Um, I like to push up on the back of the arrow. That just ensures that I have a solid bond to that wrap. And again, we're gonna wait here for about 30 seconds and then this is gonna be ready to fletch the next side. All right, so that one is on. Again, take my, uh, my Q-tip run it down the sides, clean off any of that excess glue, and we're gonna rotate and repeat the process again. A little glue goes a long way, but if you feel like you didn't get enough glue spread out throughout the vein, uh, don't feel or don't be afraid to add a little bit more. So again, hold our vein, hold our jig, push that plate down, make sure that arrow is in place, 
and then I'm just going to apply pressure to the plate and uh, the arrow and make sure that that vein seats properly. And we will wait about 30 more seconds. And while we're doing that, I just want to show you guys kind of the new setup. Um, we're going to be using this uh, going forward uh, when we're doing videos here in, uh, in the man cave. Uh, let, me, let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, I think this setup actually works out a little bit better being, uh, being able to stand behind the table and actually uh, to show you guys exactly what we're working on. But now this is going to be all set and ready to go. So again, this one's got a little bit of access glue. Uh, so I'm going to wipe this down. Hopefully you guys can see that in the second angle. And we are ready to rock and roll. Now, one thing I'm going to come to the other side and show you. So, so with that setup, you can see here that the vein placement is pretty precise. And let me show you a close up of that modification that I made. So you can see here, again, I just simply added tape with some cardboard and all that actually did was make this base sit farther forward, whereas typically it would just sit flush with this, the, with the plastic jig. So now it just sits here. And like I said, with that, uh, with that slight modification, I'm still able to achieve great vein placement. So now that that is all done, uh, this arrow is basically ready to go. Uh, one thing that I would recommend is you kind of do the tip and tail method. Uh, what this is going to do is it's actually going to help keep your arrows on uh, or keep your fletchings on your arrow if you uh, go through a target or actually if you have a pass through through an animal. And what you're going to do is just take your glue and just add a couple small dots of, uh, of glue on uh, the bottom and top of your fletch uh, with the tip and tail method. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one there. Add one there. Just blow on that a little bit and then what we're going to do is we're just going to set this arrow aside. We're going to let that glue really cure to that arrow before we go out and shoot it. What I would recommend is just give it a couple hours, um, preferably if you can wait, do it overnight um, and then that'll ensure that that arrow or those fletchings has, has really bonded to that arrow. So uh, that's it for this week's video. I just wanted to do a quick uh, arrow build start to finish. Again, um, if you don't have an arrow saw, don't let that stop you from starting to do some custom arrow build and start tinkering around uh, with your guys' setup to ensure that you're getting the best possible arrow flight out of your bow. Uh, this is something that's been new to me. Uh, I started out, like I said, just by picking up a cheap, inexpensive boning jig. I did a review on this a while back. Uh, this one was about 40 bucks, and then I kind of upgraded to the Bitsenberger once I realized uh, that fletching arrows was going to be something that I was going to continue uh, going forward. Um, so again, I, I hope you guys found this uh, this video useful. Uh, like I said, don't let uh, not having an arrow saw stop you from tinkering with your setups. Just go out, get an inexpensive fletching jig, see if you like it, and then start to shoot some arrows and see which one groups best for you. Uh, the, the nice thing is once you have a fletching jig, you can start buying different types of fletchings and you can start playing with the different types of offsets. Definitely with the Bitsenberger jig, you can customize uh, if you wanna go with a super aggressive helical or if you just want to stick with a, a three degree helical um, the boning jigs are, are an all right um, jig to start out with so uh, like I said uh, that's it for this week's video uh, I hope you guys found this video educational I hope it helps you out later down the road if you guys have any questions make sure that you leave me a comment below and if you're new to this channel and you've made it to this point in the video please consider subscribing uh, and hitting that bell notification so you guys are notified next time that we put out another outdoor adventure Adventure. Uh, also keep in mind we do have some merch available. Uh, we have shirts and we have uh, some hats. We have them in Woodland Camo. And then this is the newest edition which is uh, Real Tree Original. Uh, all of these are up at our Michigan Out 
Michigan Ambush Outdoors webpage. It's just miambushoutdoors.com. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, check it out. Make sure you guys go grab a hat, grab a shirt, um, and you know, grab a beanie. Show your guys' support. Your guys' support greatly helps out this channel. And if not, just go check out the website and let me know what you guys think. It's not a requirement that you guys buy anything. Uh, but as always, thanks for tuning in, uh, and we will see you guys on the next one.